celebrate recovery from meth, alcohol, and food addictions. Currently, I struggle with pride and control, and my name is Michelle. Hello. All right, so um, I don't know if you guys remember me. Uh, when I showed up here three years ago, me and my husband started attending this church about three years ago. Uh, we came to celebrate recovery first. And, um, and Scott, Scott got us to come here on a Sunday morning, and uh, we've, you guys have been our family ever since. Yeah. Um, so, but I'm, I'm not that same person. I'm not the person that I was three years ago when I showed up here. Um, when I first started coming here, uh, I hated myself. I didn't wear jewelry or high heels. I didn't dress up for church. I didn't stand up straight. Um, I couldn't accept a compliment to save my life. Uh, and I really didn't love myself. I used food and alcohol to make me feel better. When I got to celebrate recovery, I was completely broken and in denial about having any problems. I didn't know that I needed help. I really just showed up to support my husband in his recovery. When I started to actually work the steps and renew my relationship with God, he started to reveal to me where I needed healing. I got to the root of why I hated myself, and through this program and the support of the wonderful sisters in Christ that I have here, I was able to not only accept God's forgiveness, but I was able to forgive myself. Yeah, I started to love me. Uh, principle six says, evaluate all my relationships to forgive those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I have done, except when to do so would harm myself or others. And in evaluating my relationships, I realized that the most unhealthy relationship that I had was the one that I had with food. Um, God restored my relationship with food, and this program has helped me to stop all of the bad habits and replace them with good ones. With the help of this program and my doctors, I have made healthy lifestyle changes that I have been able to maintain, um, so that I have been able to maintain my 140 pound weight loss. Yeah. And it, it really is because I was able to forgive myself and start loving myself and change my relationship Praise with food. Um, principle eight says yield my, oh wait, sorry. Uh, principle seven says reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. Uh, principle eight says, yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. By living these principles every single day, um, God has uh, really uh, allowed me to change, God has really changed my life. After forgiving myself, um, I have love for myself. I dress up for church. I wear jewelry and heels. Now I stand up straight, and I believe all of the nice things that people have to say to me. Yeah, and in fact, it was right here in this church, in the foyer. Um, I was standing behind the table at Celebrate Recovery, and one of the beautiful women here came up and gave me a compliment, and it was the very first time that um, that negative voice in my head wasn't like, that's not true. You know what I mean? And so um, it really, that's when I was like, oh, wow, okay. You know what I mean? Um, and I really, really believed what she said about me. And it was, it was lovely. Um, through God, this program has restored so much in my life. James 1.22 says, don't just hear the word of God and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. This program has eight easy principles to follow that help me do just that. I have truly been set free. Thank you for letting me share. Amen. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I recovered from alcohol and nicotine addictions, and my name is Ashley. I grew up uh, in a pretty, actually very dysfunctional family, a very broken home. Uh, ever since I was in grade school, I've been bullied, uh, put down, called ugly, worthless, always the last one chosen. Um, I was never good at anything, um, didn't really have a whole lot of friends. So I have a lot of self-esteem issues, self-worth issues, uh, I lack uh, confidence. Um, I don't believe in myself. Um, 
And so over a lot of time um, and a lot of mistakes in my life, uh, began using alcohol and nicotine as coping mechanisms. And so by the age of 22, I was divorced with two, two babies um, and fell into a, a bad area um, where I, I didn't know how to cope with, with life. And so in my family, any mistakes you made, you, were, you weren't held with grace um, or forgiveness, you were kicked out. You were no longer part of the family or no longer a friend. So I wasn't um, familiar with grace and mercy in any form. Forgiveness was not something that was familiar, so it was very hard for me to forgive people and not hold resentments and anger. So through my divorce, I held a lot of anger for a really long time. Um, and uh, so trying to cope through life um, for the next 20 years, I used alcohol and nicotine, and that became a very abusive person, somebody I, I wasn't. Um, my children and my husband would always say, you know, drinking alcohol, that person wasn't you, that was, that was some other crazy lady, and it wasn't me, and it wasn't who I wanted to be. Um, but I didn't have God on my side that I knew of. I didn't, I didn't believe that in my heart. And uh, on Christmas, no, it was actually a uh, Halloween-ish area, um, I drank enough to where I became very aggressive and mean to my kids. And it, it built a lot of guilt and shame in my life and in my heart. And um, I was very hard to accept myself and be okay in my own skin. And I called my friend because I knew I needed help. And she'd been inviting me to Celebrate Recovery for roughly a year. But I didn't know what Celebrate Recovery was. I was like, I'm not recovered from anything. I can't celebrate anything. There's nothing to celebrate. Um, so I didn't understand. And finally, that, that moment that broke me very hard, um, I went and I cried for a really long time. She did not, by the way, tell me that it was Christ-centered. She just says, hey, come join me. Um, in case you want to know, it's this friend right here. <laughs> um, and so she was afraid. She, thought she didn't know where I stood with God, and so she was afraid I wouldn't come in the doors. And so finally we did. We came in, and I worshiped God. And it was the most amazing, incredible experience of my life. Um, I was able to then attend church the next day here at BFA where they had a, a gentleman stand up here with a backpack and chains bound to the stage with all his hurts, hangups, and habits. And I just sat there crying and going, every one of those is me. And I'm carrying all this weight and burden on me and it, it's not fun. Um, so I started going to Celebrate Recovery and little by little, I learned that alcohol and nicotine were something that I was able to break that chain and break away from. Um, but it's the anger and all those hurts that have happened throughout my life that I'm able to now work through in this, not program, but ministry of beautiful, wonderful people who are helping guide me to God in all my moments rather than relying on myself to figure out how to heal. Thank you for letting me share. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Give them a big hand, would you please? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet if you would, please. You know what? It's exciting to me to hear how God moves. And you know, the, the Bible talks about how our lives are a gospel for other people to read. People don't care what you say. They want to know how you live. How many understand that? It's a different day. You know, some of us, there are two kinds of people here today. There may be three. One is, I'm here, right? The other is, well, we had all kinds of problems going up, but we didn't have anywhere to go, so we just had to press through and deal with our problems and look at us. Yeah, look at you. Look at you. Very few of us get through unscathed without the scars. That's why it's important. The Bible says, share your burdens one with another. And then there's the other group that's here today. And I would venture to say that there are more of us than there are the others. Those of us who have hurts and hang-ups and habits. 
And nobody may know about what you're struggling with, but he does. And today can be a day of victory. Today can be a day where we speak life over our lives and over our situation, and we can walk out of here set free today. I believe in that. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. He did that in my life, and he's done it in your life, and you can walk away from those things today. We're going to sing a chorus that Nathan and the worship team is going to lead us in. We sing it a lot around here because we believe the words are true. We're going to speak Jesus over those things this morning. So I want you today, especially especially if you're struggling with anything, I want you just to lift your hands up, follow the words, sing it from your heart, and let's see what God will do in your life. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Because I know there is peace within His presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus To every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name. Jesus. Come on, let's declare it. Over fear and all anxiety. Yes, Lord. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. His name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name Jesus, shout Jesus from the mount, and Jesus in the stream, and Jesus of yes, Lord, Jesus for my family. Come on, let's declare it. Come on, let's shout Jesus again. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Come on, let's declare this morning, shout Jesus.
just won't speak the name we declare it this morning and over yes because I know there is peace within his presence I speak Jesus though we speak Jesus this morning God we give you glory and honor Lord God, we speak Jesus over our families, over our lives, Lord, the darkness that holds us from you, Lord. May the light just pour upon your people today, Lord. May the love of Jesus flood this room today, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, to hear the testimonies, Lord, of those that you have changed they were one way and they turned and they're another. And that's because of you, Jesus. We celebrate that today. We give you praise and glory. Come on, let's give him a shout of praise this morning. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are good. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Man, it's exciting to be here today. But we'd like you just to take one moment just to say hello to your friend next to you. Maybe there's somebody new here today that you see a friendly face. Go say hello, and then we're going to pick it right back up. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really a huge part. All that chatter that you, if you're visiting with us today, we're glad you're here. You know, uh, but we don't apologize for, for what we do in a service because we believe those are components that the Lord would have us do. And uh, just loving one another, I mean, that's so important. You heard earlier in the testimonies that connections were made here in this church. Encouragement was given here in this building and on this campus, and that's so very, very important. And it's important that you connect. And if you're visiting, if you're church shopping, we would, we would encourage you to just stop your shopping. You found a good place to attend, right? This is a great church, a great family, and uh, it's easy to fall in love with these folks because they'll love you to death. That's no joke. And if you're visiting with us today, we'd like for you to just uh, take a moment, and in the pew rack in front of you, you'll find a connection card. If you'd take just a moment and fill that out and uh, just let us get to know you, you can take this, you can drop it either in the uh, offering basket when it comes by, the bucket, or you can take it back to the Welcome Center, which is in the foyer, out these doors just to your right, back against the back wall. And if you'll do that, we'll exchange it for a gift. We'd love to, for you to commemorate your visit with us, whether you're from out of town or you're here locally with giving you a little gift, and then I'll send you a, a letter this week just expressing my appreciation for you joining with us. We're going to receive the morning tithe and offering. We're just getting started. We got some more great testimonials that are coming and some things at the end that I think are gonna really be a blessing to you. But uh, this is what we do. We tell all of our visitors, if you're visiting with us, we don't ask you to give in this offering so you can relax. We don't have, we're not gonna, now the person next to you, if they attend here and they're not giving, give them a little elbow, would you do that? No, not really. This is something we do as followers of Jesus Christ. He's taught us to do this, to bring to him his tithe and our offerings. So that's what we do. And we honor him with our giving. And we're saying to the Lord, we acknowledge that you are the first, the most, the best thing in our life. And without you, we are nothing. Can you say amen to that? So would you bow in a word of prayer with me, please? Heavenly Father, such a joy to be here with family today. 
We love our church family and we love the opportunity we have together, whether it's on a Sunday or midweek or any time, Lord, throughout the week. I just pray your blessing upon this church family today. Your word declares that, God, you are a God of blessing and you bless us in every way. And sometimes the blessing isn't what we had anticipated. There are prayers, Lord, that we pray that you answer. There are prayers that you say, wait. And there are some prayers that you say, no. And then there are things, Lord, that you are doing behind the scenes for us. We have no idea what you're doing, what you've protected us from, what you've watched over our family from and keeping the fiery darts of the enemy away. Doors that you are preparing to open for us, Lord. But for all of those things, we are grateful. And I pray today as we give in this offering that, Lord, you'll, you'll receive it as a sacrifice of love from our hearts to yours. Bless it, we pray. Lord, we see with Celebrate Recovery, this is just one of many, many need-meeting ministries that we have in this church. And, Lord, we're able to do that because people like us that are in this room and those who are watching, we're able to give and we support ministry. So we pray your blessing would be upon that as well. In Jesus' name, amen. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness You're the hope to the hopeless You're the peace in this restless You are There is no one like our God Oh, there is no one like our God Greater things have yet to come Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace in the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like
leave that. We believe that uh, we're scratching the surface of what you want to do in the city of Bakersfield and beyond. Lord, we look at the news and what's going on around the world. We even see things happening here in Bakersfield that are alarming to us. But we know that you are still on the throne. And we're asking you, God, to uh, inspire us and put your spirit in us to motivate us to reach more people for you this coming year than we've ever done before. That's my prayer for every person in this room. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. And we thank you, Lord, that you do care about us. No matter what, who's, who's on the seat in the White House, doesn't matter. Lord, we know who we want there, but we know that you're still on the throne and that's all that counts. So we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm gonna ask you to be seated. I was been made aware that uh, our air conditioner is working a little overtime. I hope you're okay down here, but I think upstairs, I think it is hot. And I would recommend that you come down here if you would like to. We do have seats scattered through because it's not gonna get any better up there. I'm just forewarning you, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss the rest of this service. There's a passage of scripture in John 8, 31 that says this, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will, will make you free. Our next two guests, are now walking in that truth. I want you to welcome Stephen Wyatt and Dolores Madrano as they come to share those stories with us. Come on up, guys. Here you go, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. How are you guys liking your first CR meeting? <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Stephen Wyatt, and I'm a grateful believer that struggles with pride and nicotine. So some of you in this church have heard my testimony before, and some of you heard me and my wife give our couple's testimony about how God brought us to CR. This particular testimony is about some things that God revealed to me through CR. Celebrate Recovery taught me how to have a sincere relationship with Christ. My past was riddled with deliberate sin. I was addicted to meth, I worshiped demons, and I was in and out of prison. I was saved while I was in jail, but I still struggled with my addiction to drugs. And I ended up getting clean, but I started drinking heavily. Eventually, I was in a marriage that was falling apart. So she and I began attending Celebrate Recovery. We both finished a step study through the ministry, became leaders, and I was slated to be the next ministry leader. But in my mind, I thought, I can't lead a recovery group with an addiction to cigarettes. So I decided to quit. But for reasons unknown to me at the time, uh, I couldn't kick the habit. In fact, some of you here might remember when I asked the congregation to pray for that particular struggle. I ended up taking this problem straight to God. But 1 Corinthians 10:12 warns us, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. The prayer was this, God, why can't I kick this? I've overcome so many harder things. I overcame addiction, alcohol, anger, and so much more. Why is this so difficult? A few days later, I relapsed. When I prayed asking God what happened, he responded, you didn't overcome those things, Stephen. I overcame those things for you. In my pride, I had attempted to steal God's glory. I had to step down from all leadership roles and humble myself before God, but I was embarrassed and ashamed of what my pride had cost me, and I ended up drinking for months. I felt like I let everyone down, but God again revealed to me my pride. After praying one night, I heard him say to my heart, why does your pride still make you steal my glory? You haven't let anyone down because you weren't holding them up. Yeah. I am. Get up and return to the path that brought you close to me. Yeah. So I returned to serve at CR and found that indeed, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Everyone was understanding, and I saw that my struggle hadn't really affected others as dramatically as I thought. How prideful of me to think that I had that much influence over others in their relationship with God. Nearly a year later, after I'd fully recommitted myself to God, I'm serving at my full capacity again. All glory to the Father. 
Without Celebrate Recovery, I wouldn't have been able to see that a deeper issue than addiction existed. Celebrate Recovery doesn't help addiction or alcoholism alone. It helps with all things that we struggle with when we try to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. It's a, it's a program for hurts, hangups, and habits, sure, but more importantly, it's a program to further our relationship with God. Yeah. If I could say one thing to the people of this place right now, pray for your leaders. Pray for your leaders of small groups. Pray for your leaders of ministries. Pray for your pastors because they struggle too. Thank you for letting me share. Amen. Hi, my name is Dolores Medrano. I'm a great believer of Jesus Christ. I'm in recovery for being addicted to meth for over 20 years, abandonment issues, and mental health issues. Hello. Okay, so this is my story. I need to celebrate recovery. So, at the age of 15, I got introduced to hardcore street drugs like crystal meth. With my mental health issues and other life tragedies, I became a full-blown addict by the age of 23, leaving my, be my two beautiful boys in the care of my, my sister and my mother. In 2005, I was fired from my job and I became homeless, learning how to survive through criminal activities going in and out of jail. More than a decade, has, a decade has gone by and my meth addiction consumed me. In 2019, I was at my worst. Every door had closed. I was at rock bottom. I was so tired, of, I needed help and I didn't know how to get help. So I reached out to my mother who helped me get an apartment since I was employed again. And motels were getting too expensive. Sometimes I had to sleep in my car. I finally was able to get an apartment but I secretly stayed smoking meth, lying to everyone. In 2021, my sister found a new church, BFA, and, uh, and kept asking me to go. On the Sunday I finally did accept, I, and also, I was sick, and instead she took me to get tested at the Wilson Library. On December 5th, I found out I was positive with COVID-19 virus. I didn't want to go to the hospital, to the hospital because people were dying. My mom and sister would come check on me, scared at what they would walk, walk into since I lived alone. I'm not going to lie. I kept trying to smoke till I couldn't. I started having seizures. My organs started failing. The last thing I remember before going to the hospital was flushing all my drugs and paraphernalia and falling to my knees and asking Jesus into my heart and to forgive me for all my sins. I remember crying to him saying, I want to go to heaven, but if you will forgive me and give me another chance, I will change. So on December 10th, I went to the hospital with failing organs. Blood pressure was so low they had to take medication to pull blood from my fingers and toes, if you can tell, my fingers and toes. Um, I had I had to have 24-hour dialysis bringing me back to life, staying, staying sedated on life support for about three weeks. The hospital here in Bakersfield neglected and stopped turning me. They were expecting me to die. While I was sedated, the doctors took my mom and sister into the office two times to, make, to take me off of life support. The first time, my mom leaned and asked if I was still fighting. And she said, I raised my eyebrows and said, Oh, I raised my eyebrows. She said no. She believed God was doing something. Amen. The second time, my sister prayed for a sign after church, and he heard her. She called the hospital that night, and they told her they, that they lowered my sedation, and I coughed. So she said to the doctors, no. She now says it's his breath in my lungs. So in this story, I believe Jesus was doing something and making a way for me and how, how it was his breath in my lungs because while sedated, I had this tight squeeze on my arms and someone said to me, wake up, look around, not only once but twice and I would wake up scared because I didn't know where I was. So then I was transferred to a long-term ICU in West Covina, which is 24 hours away, I mean two hours away. I was in the hospital for 109 days with a tracheotomy and a ventilator helping me breathe. 
It was COVID time, so I was only allowed 30 minute visits twice a week. So I was always alone. I had this nurse that would read me this Jesus devotional that my sister had left me. It would always make me feel better. I knew I wasn't alone anymore. Finally, finally, May 28th, 2022, I was able to go home, having to relearn how to walk, feed myself, and go to the restroom. After months of physical therapy, I was able to return, return to work. Going back to the world was scary for me. I was now drug-free and, and planned on staying that way. I had to admit my, to myself that I'm a drug addict and I can't do this alone. I also remembered, I, I also remember as I call it an agreement I made with my Lord Jesus that I would walk in his ways. He is the reason I am here. I was miraculously healed. Even my doctors say that. Wow. COVID was a tragedy and a blessing. My whole life has changed in the best of ways. I'm a loving mother, daughter, sister, and the best grandmother to my precious granddaughter. Yeah. Oh, and God, and I'm a high school graduate now. So I am 47 years old and two and a half years clean and sober from meth. I started attending Celebrate Recovery, the 12-step study here at Baker's at BFA about five months ago, and now Saturday night. Doing so has not only taught me how to have a personal relationship with my Lord Jesus Christ, he is healing me from my hurts, hangups, and habits from my past. I have met the people like my godly sisters I can now call family, so who I can always go to. I'm not alone, I'm redeemed. As I say a 118, as I say, Isaiah 118 says, though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. Thank you and God bless. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Come on, give him a big hand, would you? The power of the living God to change and transform a life. Gonna ask our folks to get ready, take their places. The Bible says in Romans 6, 18, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves. Wait a minute. I thought he set us free from sin. Yes, slaves to righteousness. How many of you know that that's a good thing to be a slave to? Yes. Righteousness means right living, that I'm going to live rightly. I'm going to live like God wants me to live. These that you've heard today, we're only scratching the surface of those that are walking in that truth today. I want you to get ready now for a whole group of folks who are walking in the freedom that comes from knowing Christ. We call these cardboard testimonies. I want you to read them and I want you to celebrate all that God is doing.
I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken bodies heal. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen to your feet. You've been praying for miracles. These are miracles in front of you. The Bible says in John 8, 36, so if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. I want to say that to all of these who are standing at, here at the front. When the devil comes and tries to remind you of your past, you remind him of, your, of his future. Right? Because he's He's destined for a bottomless pit. That's where he's going. And he, can, he no longer has control over your lives. I want you to hear that today. And I want you to hear that today. I want you to hear that this day, as you look at these trophies of God's grace, everyone on this platform, you, if you know Jesus as your Savior, you're a trophy of God's grace. And I want to say to you today that if you're here and you would say, you know what? I've got an area in my life that I'm struggling with. 
And you know what it is. Nobody else needs to know, but you know what it is. I wonder today, I wonder how many would say, you know what? I do. I want to be set free from that thing. Just lift your hand all over this building. Lift it high. Many, many people. Here's how I felt. Here's how I felt that the Lord would have us close this service. We're going to sing a chorus. And standing here today are not necessarily preachers. These are people, real people that have had real problems that turned to Jesus and he set them free. They know how to touch God. I promise you that. And if you are here today and you would like prayer, you, you can find someone here. You can come down the front. They'll find you. You don't have to tell them what it is you're going through. You just come down and say, I need prayer. And they'll touch God on your behalf. And I believe you can walk out of this place today set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. How many believe that? Say amen. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to lead us in a chorus, Nathan. And as he sings, we invite you to come to the front and let these folks pray for you. And then we're going to go out celebrating Jesus. Come ahead. I've seen cancer.